Hare Krishna, dear devotees, and welcome to the sixth day of the World Holy Name Festival celebrations for Singapore chapter. So today we are very fortunate to have with us one of our very dear sannyasis who is always there with, with us with the Singapore chapter. His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinashak Narsingha Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, Hare Krishna. His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinashak Narsingha Maharaj was initiated by Srila Prabhupada in London in 1971 and a year later he took his second initiation as well. He has been preaching for 25 years in Asian countries like India, Philippines, China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Malaysia and Thailand. He has given countless souls practical guidance and deep inspiration and has been taking, uh, he had taken sannyas in Mayapur in 1994 from Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. He has been very strict in his sadhana and whosoever comes to know Maharaj always admires and respects his sincere and faithful practice of chanting the holy names and he is one great sannyasi who always walks his talk and has been teaching with uh, the Mayapur Institute since its inception itself. So Maharaj, we welcome you once again to the World Holy Name Celebrations for Singapore chapter. Over to you Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Om Magyana Timarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam Bandiham Shri Gara Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Scha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagadpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu State Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Tarabhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I feel very honored to have the opportunity to take part in this Holy Name Week with the devotees there. Uh, I wanted to speak on the important on the the Sankirtan movement, the chanting of the Holy Name, as we see it presented in the pages of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So I spent the day looking through different sections of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And I want to bring up a few pastimes, a few leelas, where the holy name is being propagated, being chanted by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course. Of course, even before the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we're told, well, rather not so much before the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but with the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was the chanting of the holy names. 
because Advaita Acharya and Haridas Thakur were both chanting the holy name in ecstasy on the occasion of the birth of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Advaita Acharya and Haridas Thakur were over in Shantipur, but they were chanting the holy name. The reason was, well, externally, there was the lunar eclipse. And whenever there's a lunar eclipse, it is customary that to try to overcome, to counteract the inauspiciousness of the lunar eclipse, we should take shelter of the chanting of the holy name. Right? When there's a lunar, when there's an eclipse, we don't eat, and we don't sleep, and we should just engage in Hari Kata and Hari Kirtan. So Hari Dastakur and Advaita Acharya, they were both dancing and chanting the holy name ecstatically. And actually everyone was. They were over in Shantipur, but in Mayapur people were also chanting the holy name. And we're told how everyone had gone to the Ganga, at least all the Hindus had gone to Ganga to take bath. I had the opportunity of being in Mayapur a number of years ago now. It was after Srila Prabhupada's departure on a Gorpunima festival. And the same, the same kind of event took place. There was a lunar eclipse. And we were all in Mayapur for the Gorpunima. And so we all went to the Ganga, all the devotees, we went to the Ganga and we all took bath in the Ganga and chanted the holy name while the eclipse was taking place. So Chaitanya Charitamrita describes how at the time of the birth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, everyone was engaged in chanting the holy name. And Krishna Das Kaviraj describes that even the Muslims were chanting the holy name. Because the Muslims always joke about the Hindus chanting. The Muslims are all going, Hare ah, Krishna, Hare Krishna. So they were also chanting too. They could hear the Hindus chanting and they would imitate them and mock them, but they would also chant. So in this way everyone was chanting the holy name. So this is the beginning of the Sankirtan movement which Lord Chaitanya had come to inaugurate. Chaitanya Charitamrita describes for us that the external reason for the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was to inaugurate the Sankirtan movement, which means the chanting of the holy names. And from the very moment of his birth, there was the chanting of the holy names. And as a little baby, he would continue to get people to chant the holy name. Because as a little child, sometimes he would cry. Children, you know, if you're bringing up a little child, you know, sometimes they're going to cry, they'll be irritated by something or they want some attention. So similarly, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a young baby, he was known as Nimai, he, was, he would cry. And the only way they could get him to stop crying is by chanting the holy name. All the ladies would chant, Hari Hari, Hari Hari, right? They would chant like this, they would call out the names of the Lord, they would simply call out, Hari Bo, Hari Hari, like this. And this is how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got the name Gora Hari, because he's golden color. So he likes to hear the holy name Hari, so he was given the name Gora Hari. So this is the, the beginning of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes with the chanting of the holy name and heralding the future, that in the future there will be more chanting of the holy name. He's come to inaugurate the Yuga Dharma. What is the Dharma for this Kali Yuga? Kali Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan. Krishna Shakti Vininahi Tara Pravartan. That the Dharma for the Kali Yuga is in the chanting of the holy names. And unless one has the empowerment of Lord Krishna, the Krishna Shakti, then he will not be able to propagate it. So, what better person to propagate the Yuga Dharma 
than Lord Sri Krishna himself. And Lord Sri Krishna came in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to inaugurate this Sankirtan Dharma, the, Sankir the activities of Sri Krishna Sankirtan. So Lord Chaitanya, as a young child, he was engaged in different activities with his friends. At, at a certain point, he went to Gaya and he was initiated by Ishwara Puri. And after being initiated by Ishwara Puri, then he underwent some transformation. In his early life, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had been exhibiting pastimes of scholarship. He had been studying logic and he was known to be a debater and to argue with people and no one could ever defeat him and the devotees would all avoid him. But at the same time, we would, they would think that if he would be a devotee, it would be so wonderful for our preaching movement. So it happened that Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided to go to Gaya and his purpose in going to Gaya externally, the purpose was he wanted to do Shrad for his father. His father had departed, Jagannath Mishra had left the world and he told his mother, I'm going to Gaya, I will do I will offer oblations to the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu there in Gaya on behalf of my father. But actually the real purpose on him going to Gaya was to meet with Ishwara Puri and to take initiation from him. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had already met with Ishwara Puri previously when Ishwara Puri had come to Mayapur. And they met, so he went again to meet him in Gaya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided this would be the suitable person who he could take initiation from. So he went to Gaya and he was initiated there. And then on the way back he came through Kanai Natsala and he had some very esoteric, transcendental experience with Lord Sri Krishna there in Kanai Natsala. And he came back to Mayapur totally transformed and he called all the devotees and together they began the Sankirtan. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided no need to sleep at night. We will just meet every evening in the home of Srivas Pandit and we can have Kirtan all night. And for one year or more Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was doing like this. There would simply be Sankirtan in the home of Srivas Pandit. But at that time, of course, the chanting, the kirtans were private affairs. They were not open for everyone. It was restricted. Only the intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya were allowed to come. And there's many pastimes and different people who wanted to see the kirtan, who wanted to be there. People hiding behind the curtains. And even one brahmana cursed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that you will never enjoy material life, you don't let me come. So these different events were all described there in relation to the kirtan at Srivas Angam. He said Srivas Angam was the parallel to Lord Krishna's Rasa Lila. Lord Krishna performed his pastimes in Vrindavan, although he was born in Mathura. Similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took birth at the Yoga Peet, but his pastimes as a young man were predominantly in the home of Srivas Pandit, not very far away from, Sri, from Lord Chaitanya's own home. Those of you who go to Mayapur, you will know, just down the road, around the corner a little bit, you come to Srivas Pandit's house. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going there and, and, and the, uh, the, Sri, Sri, the Anga, the yard there, Srivas Pandit's house, they were having kirtan every night. So Lord Chaitanya was relishing these kirtans, 
but he had to take sannyas. It was arranged that the Lord would take sannyas and he would leave Mayapur and go off. Of course, it was heartbreaking for all the devotees there in Mayapur to lose his association, but what could be done? The Lord had his, had to, he had to go ahead, he had to do this. So after taking sannyas, then he moved to, first of all, he was taken to the home of Advaita Acharya by trickery. Lord Nityananda tricked him. Lord Chaitanya, after he took sannyas, he wanted to go immediately to Vrindavan. But Lord Nityananda tricked him and brought him instead to Shantipur to meet with Advaita Acharya. And then they brought Mother Sachi all the way from Mayapur. She came there to Shantipur and she could see her son as a sannyasi. And she was there cooking for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because Lord Chaitanya actually been traveling after he took sannyas at Katwa, then they went to Shantipur. So for three days he had not taken any food. And so when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't notice he hadn't taken any food. He was so much in ecstasy of love of Krishna. He wasn't thinking of his stomach. He was just chanting and he was just in ecstasy, love of Krishna, and he wanted to go to Vrindavan. He was thinking, Vrindavan, I'm going to go to Vrindavan. But instead they brought him to Shantipur and Advaita Acharya's home, and then Mother Sachi came and other devotees all came from Mayapur because they all heard how Lord Chaitanya had taken sannyas. So while he was there in Shantipur, he stayed there for several days, Mother Sachi was cooking, and every evening they would have kirtan for many hours. And I was reading in the Chaitanya Charitamrita there, as Srila Prabhupada describes, he said, every ISKCON center, he said, they should actually have kirtan every evening for at least three hours at least three hours. Can you imagine? means if you start at seven o'clock, you go to ten o'clock, kirtan. He said this will be very good for all the devotees and for the temple atmosphere, it will be wonderful. He said every center should do like this. Every evening you must do kirtan, sankirtan, for three hours, at least. Hmm. So Lord Chaitanya every evening, they during the daytime, they would discuss topics of Krishna, and at night, they would have Sankirtan. They would take shelter of the chanting of the Holy Name. Oh, of course, we do it too. We take shelter of the Holy... In the morning, we chant Japa. But in the evening, what happens? Well, often people, in the daytime, we get caught up in so many different administrative affairs, and maybe you have a job, different odd things to do in an office and so on. And then at night, maybe there's a little class. Or, but actually, Prabhupada, Prabhupada says in Chaitanya Charitamrita, he wanted kirtan for three hours. Of course, we didn't see Prabhupada really institute that in the ISKCON program. It was more Bhagavad Gita. But before and after should be kirtan. Before, the, usually we'll have RT before, so there will be kirtan, and then the class, and then after the class, then again, a little kirtan. It's important. We have to associate with the holy name of Lord Krishna. Associating with Krishna means chanting His holy name. The Kali Kali Namarupe Krishna Avatar. We say the Lord comes in the Kali Yuga, He incarnates in the form of His Holy Name. So very important for us, chanting the Holy Name. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was chanting the Holy Name there regularly at Chantipur with Advaita Acharya. And then after some days there, then He has to go to, he goes off to Jagannath Puri. And He goes to Jagannath Puri and he liberates Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and then he wants to travel to South India. 
And when he's traveling in South India, he has some wonderful pastimes. There was one Brahmana, he was a devotee of Lord Rama, and he was chanting the holy name of Lord Rama. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met him and stayed with him. And after Lord Chaitanya stayed with him, he began to chant the holy name of Krishna. And he didn't know why, he couldn't understand. This is the association of a devotee. When you associate with devotees, people also start to chant. Devotees chanting, we also learn to chant by hearing the devotees chant. Another important incident which took place in South India was because many people, they heard about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that how he's a great philosopher, a great scholar, he's de he converted Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya into a Vaishnava. So different people would come to meet him and ch to challenge him. So there was one Buddhist scholar, a very learned scholar, and he had disciples, and he came to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But this Buddhist scholar could not defeat Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Rather, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu defeated all of his arguments. Chaitanya Taratamrita describes that there are nine principles of the Buddhist philosophy. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu smashed all of these principles and he established the Vaishnava Siddhanta. So the Buddhist scholar was quite humiliated that he'd been defeated so badly. He went away and then he began to contemplate how he could get revenge. And he decided that they would bring an offering of contaminated foodstuff and they would present it as Maha Prasadam to Lord Chaitanya. Could you imagine? What an unpleasant thing to do. They brought this big plate, you know, the dish, dishes and all different things, and it was all contaminated foodstuffs. And they were going to get, they wanted to give it to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, pretending to show respect, but at the same time being very insulting. So they had this big plate with all contaminated foodstuffs to offer to Lord Chaitanya. And just as they were bringing it, a big bird suddenly appeared, a big bird, and it, with its, with its uh, talons, it picked up that plate of Mahaprasadam, and it flew up in the air with carrying the plate, and then it suddenly dropped the plate. And when he dropped the plate, the plate, which was a heavy metal plate, it fell right on the head, the edge of the plate fell right on the head of the Buddha's master and knocked him unconscious. And the other smaller dishes all fell on the heads of his different disciples. So when their spiritual master, the Buddhist teacher, was knocked unconscious, all of the followers of the Buddhist master, they all understood that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must be really a very great, very powerful soul. Because they knew that all of the food was contaminated, so they thought, we have to go and apart. we should fall at the, they all came, they fell at the feet of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and they were begging forgiveness, that please, and they asked Lord Chaitanya, that you please, please, can you bring our teacher back to life? Because we think he's dead, he was knocked unconscious, he's not conscious, he may be dead. Could you please, by your power, can you bring him back to life? So Lord Chaitanya said to these Buddhists, he said, you want to bring your teacher back to life? You have to chant the holy name. You have to chant Krishna and Rama and Hari. So Lord Chaitanya taught them all to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. And they all chanted, and they chanted congregate, the con all of them together as a group, they all chanted. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. They were all chanting loudly and they saw their spiritual master gradually. 
he came back to life. And when he came back to life, he also began to chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Now previously he'd never chanted, but somehow now he totally transformed. And Prabhupada's purport on this section is very important to us. But he quotes actually the purport of Bhaktivinoda Thakur on this pastime. He said, actually, the disciples of the Buddhist, they received the holy name of Lord Krishna from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught them to chant the holy name of Krishna. That is the real business of a spiritual master. The business of the disciple is to receive the holy name from his spiritual master. Generally we speak about the first initiation, Harinam initiation, which Prabhupada said is the most important of the initiations. He said by the first initiation alone one can be delivered back to Godhead. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had instructed all the followers of the Buddhist Master how to chant the holy name of Lord Krishna. And then they had chanted and they'd given the holy name to their guru. So actually the disciples of the Buddhist Master, they became the guru. And they were giving the holy name of Lord Krishna to someone who previously had been their teacher. Now they were teaching him. They taught him and they gave him the holy name of Lord Krishna. And in this way the Buddhist master also chanted the holy name of Krishna. They were all transformed by the potency of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the holy name. Just see the effects of the holy name. We can see how so many people come to Krishna consciousness. Before coming to Krishna Consciousness, we were in a very inauspicious, unfortunate condition. We were, Prabhupada says, many were dirty and, and not in healthy condition, not even clean. But we come to Krishna Consciousness and we become transformed. We shave our heads, we put on tilak, and put on the tosi beads around our neck. And Prabhupada said, he said, they look just like they came from Vaikuntha with all of these auspicious marks on their bodies. So this is the power of the holy name of Krishna, which transforms. And it, it shows there in the Chaitanya Charitamrita how Buddhists, with who Prabhupada said actually Buddhists should never even be seen by devotees because they don't believe in God, their philosophy is atheistic, they don't believe in any creator, and so they have a very materialistic conception of the world, and they have no conception of God. But even they can be changed and made into great devotees by the mercy of the Holy Name, especially when it's delivered from a great devotee or from the Lord Himself, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, the, another important pastime concerning the giving of the Holy Name, I saw it as when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling to Vrindavan. On his way to Vrindavan, he went through Benares or Varanasi, right? Banarasa, which has been a holy place for many, many thousands of years. So Banaras is usually the place of the Buddhas and the Mayavadis, the followers of Lord of followers of Shankaracharya, they're there. Banaras is not usually considered a prominent place of pilgrimage for Vaishnavas. However, Lord Chaitanya went there and he had already sent some of his devotees there.
Previously, he'd gone to Bangladesh, and at that time he met a person called Tapana Mishra. So Tapana Mishra had had a dream. Well, this, this was before Lord Chaitanya took sannyasi. Lord Chaitanya had gone to Bangladesh as a teacher, and he was traveling around teaching, but Tapana Mishra had a dream that this person was a very great saint, that he was the Lord himself, and that he could deliver the highest spiritual enlightenment to him. So Tapana Mishra came to Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya at that time instructed him that if you go to Varanasi, that I'll, I will meet you there. I can meet you there again. So this was before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had even taken sannyas. So it shows that Lord Chaitanya understood that in the future he's going to take sannyas and at that time he would go through Banaras. At any rate, Tapana Mishra took that advice of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he moved. He went to stay in Varanasi. And another devotee also came there, Chandrasekhar Acharya. So they were both there in Varanasi. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu initially was not associating with all the Mayavadi sannyasis. He was simply doing Sankirtan on his own in the streets of Varanasi. He was chanting and dancing alone. He, he was so tall and powerful and so attractive. Everyone who saw him they were just amazed and overwhelmed by his powerful built body and his a very attractive features. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing there in the streets of Varanasi and he was attracting a lot of attention. People were following him. But the Mayavadi sannyasis, they didn't like it. And they were they were under the leadership of the uh, their head of the Mayavadi group was called Prakashananda Saraswati. Prakashananda Saraswati. He was like the prominent Mayavadi sannyasi there, and he had so many other Mayavadi sannyasi followers. So they would go to him and complain that, look at this sannyasi, he's chanting this Hare Krishna. And Prakashananda Saraswati would say, yeah, he's just a sentimentalist. Don't worry about this Chaitanya. And they would only address him as Chaitanya. Actually, Mahaprabhu's sannyas name was Sri, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. But these Mayavadis, because they're so offensive to the Lord, they're not allowed to say the holy name of Lord Krishna. It doesn't appear in their tongue even, because they're so offensive by their Mayavadi philosophy. The name does not appear on their tongue. So they simply describe Lord Chaitanya, Lord Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They just simply see that Chaitanya, Chaitanya. They would only speak like that. And they were criticizing him. So it was very painful for Prakashananda, for rather for Tapana Mishra and Chandra Shekhar. As devotees, they didn't like to hear Lord Chaitanya being criticized. And Lord Chaitanya could understand their mood also. He was thinking what to do. At that time, a Maharashtrian Brahmin who was residing there, who was a devotee, he also thought how to do something to get these people to respect Lord Chaitanya. And he arranged a meeting and he called all the Mayavadi sannyasis of Varanasi to his home. So he also came to invite Lord Chaitanya. Now, usually Lord Chaitanya would not associate with these people because they're Mayavadis. They don't worship the deity. They don't eat Krishna Prasadam. They don't chant the holy name, usually. And they just speculate on Vedanta philosophy. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had no reason to associate with them. He would simply do his Sankirtan. But when this Brahmana came to invite them, Mahaprabhu took the opportunity to go there also, to be with him. And Mahaprabhu came there and then there was the pastime at the entrance 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sat in the doorway where people washed their feet, but when he sat there, he exhibited a brilliant effulgence. And Prakashananda Saraswati, who was already seated inside the house, he saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's effulgence and he was surprised that, oh, he thought this, this sannyasi has already achieved Brahman liberation. He's already liberated, he's already become one with the Brahman, he's so effulgent. So Prakashananda Saraswati got up and he brought, he says, please don't sit there, please come in. And Srila Prabhupada describes that because Prakashananda Saraswati did this simple service for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he got the benefit of Agyata Sukriti, that he did some devotional service unknowingly and that qualified him for greater mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came in and he sat in the midst of Prakashananda Saraswati and all the Mayavari sannyasis. And then Prakashananda Saraswati began to question him that why you don't study Vedanta with us? Why you're only doing all of this chanting? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained to them very clearly but he said, well, first of all, I said, my spiritual master said, I'm a foolish person, I cannot understand Vedanta, that I should just chant the holy name of Krishna. But then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went on to describe everything about Vedanta and the actual conclusion of Vedanta is that one should chant the holy name and the goal of life is to develop love of God. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained everything very clearly, he explained the, the, all the meanings behind the Vedanta Sutra and the essence of it was to chant the holy name of Krishna and to develop love for Krishna. And they were listening and they were sitting and they were hearing and they agreed, they accepted everything he said. And they said, you, you are the actual, you must be the incarnation of Vedic knowledge. You know everything. We cannot argue with you. And they also chanted the name of Krishna. After hearing from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they also chanted the holy name of Krishna. So this was the beginning of the deliverance of these Mayavadi sannyasis in Benares. Then later on, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was having kirtan regularly in Varanasi. Mahaprabhu would do kirtan in front of the deity of Bindu Madhava. It's a very beautiful deity, Bindu Madhava. If you go to Varanasi, you can go and see the deity. The location has changed, but it's still there in Varanasi. It's a very beautiful deity, nice temple, and uh, very nicely worshipped. And Lord Chaitanya would go there and he would have kirtan, they would, he would have sankirtan. Thousands of people would all come and they would all chant the holy name with Lord Chaitanya. And in, in that section, uh, Srila, Srila Prabhupada describes how Lord Chaitanya would chant. He said they would chant the Maha Mantra, but the Maha Mantra is described as Hare Harai Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha Gopal Govinda Ram Shri Sudan. And Prabhupada said this is simply another version of the Maha Mantra. We should chant the holy name. It's just another version of the Maha Mantra. And Srila Prabhupada ordered us, actually said that especially in Mayapur Dham, we should chant at the end of every kirtan or during every kirtan, there should be chanting of this Hare Hare Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha Gopal Govinda Ram Shri Sudan. So this, this was a, a personal favorite of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Prabhupada also told us like that. And he said, we should chant like this, we should chant the holy name. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was having this kirtan in front of Bindu Madhava and the Mayabadi sannyasis headed by Prakasananda Saraswati. They were attracted 
they also came. They wanted to be there and join in the kirtan. This is the mercy of the association with the Supreme Lord Himself, how it transforms people, even though they're dull, dull and intelligence is covered by this dark philosophy of Mayavadi teachings, that they can be changed, they can take to the chanting of the holy name of Lord Krishna. And Prakasananda Saraswati came and touched the, took, took the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu said, no, no, I, I'm not even worthy to be a disciple of your disciple. I'm, not, I'm nothing. But, of course, Prakashananda Saraswati did not agree. And Prakashananda Saraswati was quoting Srimad Bhagavatam. He's described there how he quoted Srimad Bhagavatam. So how, how much he had changed, you see, through the contact with the devotee. So this is uh, an important kirtan which took place with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He got the Mayavadi sannyasis to chant the holy name. Oh, it was also mentioned on their first meeting that after they chanted the holy name, then Lord Chaitanya sat there with them and they took prasadam together. Because Prabhupada said, because they had chanted the holy name, so they they changed, they've given up their impersonal philosophy, they've become like Vaishnavas. So Lord Chaitanya sat there and he took prasadam with them. They ate together. This is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And just one more pastime I wanted to mention where there's the chanting of the holy name in relation to Lord Chaitanya wow. and his preaching. Of course, Lord Chaitanya is everywhere he's going, he's chanting the holy name, dancing, and chanting. One thing I meant to mention was when he went through Jarakanda also, going through the forest of Jarakanda, he was chanting the holy name. And how was he chanting the holy name of Krishna there? And then again, a little different, Krishna, 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 hey, Krishna, 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 Rakshamam. Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava Pahimam, Rama Raghava, Rama Raghava, Rama Raghava Pahimam, oh, Rakshamam, Rakshamam, protect me, Pahimam, maintain me. He please praise to Lord Rama, please protect me, please to Lord Krishna, please maintain me. But he was chanting the holy name like this, Krishna, Krishna. This is also Sankirtan, chanting the holy name. And because Lord Chaitanya was chanting like this, all the wild animals in the Jarakanda forest, they were also dancing. And even ferocious animals like tigers, they would embrace gentle animals like the deer. Previously, the tigers ch hunting the deer to kill, to eat, but with Lord Chaitanya there chanting the holy name, they became friends and the tigers embracing the deer. The wild animals became gentle through the power of the holy name. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going to Vrindavan. And when he came to Vrindavan, he came to Vishramgat, the first place in Mathura, you barely take bath there, Vishramgat, when you begin the Parikram, that should be the first bathing place. And near to there is the Keshava temple, where the deity of Keshava was. Deity is still there, it's got a bigger, they have a much bigger temple now. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to see the Keshava deity and he was chanting and dancing there. He was chanting alone. He, he had one servant with him, but the servant was carrying all of his bags and different things. And the servant didn't have quite the same ecstatic mood, but he was taking care of, he has to watch everything, take care of the things they're carrying. So he didn't chant and dance, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is chanting and dancing. 
in front of the Keshava deity and many people are watching and then suddenly this elderly Brahmana appears and he also begins to chant and dance and together the two of them became ecstatic and they were chanting in ecstasy and the people were watching and they were thinking oh this is no ordinary display this is not ordinary this chanting and dancing this is not of the material world no definitely it's not of the material world Naratam Das Thakur says, Golokera Primadan Hari Nam Sankirtan, that the holy name has descended from the spiritual world. This is the holy name. It's not material. And when we do the Sankirtan movement, when we take part in Sankirtan, this is the spiritual world. This is the business of devotees to do Sankirtan. Wherever we go, whoever we meet, get them to chant the holy name. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing and chanting in front of the Keshava deity there with this elderly Brahmana. And he was surprised because usually, you know, you usually do Kirtan and people just look. They just look. Nobody, you don't get too many people come and actually join in. But this elderly Brahmana came in and he was ecstatic, he was in ecstasy with Lord Chaitanya. So afterwards Lord Chaitanya took that Brahmana aside and spoke to him in private and he asked him, uh, who are you? Uh, how, how, where did you learn to chant and dance like this? How do you know this chanting and dancing? And then the Brahmana explained that he said, actually, he said, I'm a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. And when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, then he fell at the feet of the Brahmana. But the Brahmana was very embarrassed. The Brahmana said, no, no. He said, you're a sannyasi. I I'm should fall at your feet. You don't worship me. But then Mahaprabhu explained that, well, he said, you are like my spiritual master, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, he said, I am initiated by Ishwara Puri, and Ishwara Puri is a disciple of Madhavendra Puri also. So my spiritual master is your god brother. So I consider you also to be just like my spiritual master. The Brahmana was very humble, and he requested Lord Chaitanya, you please come to my home, let me feed you. He said, previously, Madhavendra Puri came to my home and took his meal there. You please also come to my home and take your food there. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he heard that, he said, Oh, if Madhavendra Puri came to your home, then I am very, very fortunate to also come to your home to take my meal there. It is my great fortune. So we see the value of the association with a devotee. When two devotees, even though they didn't know each other, and one, Mahaprabhu is young, a young sannyasi, is still in his twenties, and this old Brahmin, maybe sixties odd, like that, older, and he's dancing, they're dancing together, both of them in ecstasy, in the chanting of the holy name. This is Sankirtan. It brings out our spiritual nature. Brahmanda Brahmite Konya Bhag... Ah, no, wait. Um, the verse is that... Uh, Brahma Bhutta Prasannatma Nasochati Nakanchati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhaktim Labhati Brahm One who is Brahma Bhutta is Prasannatma. He's a joyful soul, right? So that's the beginning, actually, the beginning of spiritual life, the awakening of our spiritual self. As we say in the Shikshastikam, it is the life of all transcendental knowledge, increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and gives one a taste of the full nectar for which we are always anxious. So, as devotees, 
we are dedicated to pushing on the Sankirtan movement. Srila Prabhupada explains that the purpose of sannyas is to propagate the Sankirtan movement. And we see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doing that. He didn't have books. He didn't even carry a madanga and cartels. He just simply went and chanted and danced and simply because of his spiritual potency. Of course, later on, our own Srila Prabhupada, he went to America and he began the Sankirtan movement there. He didn't have much of a drum. Somehow they got some African bongo drum. Maybe he must have had a little pair of cartels. But he had faith in the holy name. And he could go there into Thompson Square Park in New York City and he could chant. And by his chanting he attracted people to also come and join the Sankirtan movement. Prabhupada says, Sankirtan, he said, just need one person. One person can bring a drum and cart out. You one person you one person plays the drum, other person comes along, they can play the cart out. You can have a good kirtan. Maybe if we just have to have that faith in the holy name, right? Going out and chanting the holy name, it will bring, it awakens the Krishna consciousness in the hearts of so many conditioned souls. And we are seeing more and more the devotees go everywhere, go all over the world, chanting and dancing. We know His Holiness Mahavishnu Swami is a member of a group called Namaruchi and they go around the world. They went off during the pandemic, they were there in South America everywhere chanting and dancing. Then they came back, go to Europe. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Yeah? We just had a power yes, Maharaj, we can hear you. We just had a power cut here, so if you see me in me, I'm all in the dark now. <laughs> yeah, Maharaj, we can hear you, but we cannot see you. Right, okay, so just to let you know, there's a power cut. Nothing unusual in Mayapur, you know, they happen all the time. Don't, don't be worried. Right, okay, I think it's a good place to stop. Maybe that's Krishna telling me I should stop here and ask if there's any questions. Or any comments. No questions so far that we can see on the Facebook page. Uh -huh. Well, that's the advantage of saying yeah. saying Kutan. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Maharaj. There is one question. Uh, a devotee wanted to uh, wanted was requesting for describing the Raman Raghav mantra on South India tour. Rama Raghava Mantra. Yes. Rama Raghava. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I said in Janakanda Forest he was singing Krishna Krishna, right? It was Krishna Krishna, Rama Raghava, Rama Raghava, Ratchamam. That was in Janakanda Forest where we heard that. Not South India tour. And it was part of the Maham, part of the mantra. It's more Krishna, Krishna. I was, I'll tell you one thing, I, be, just before Prabhupada left the world, I was in, I remember in 1977, Prabhupada had come to Juhu, to the temple there at Juhu, and he was staying in his quarters there in Juhu, and I had the privilege to go and chant along with another devotee, another one American brahmachari, and we were, we were allowed to go into Prabhupada's room to do a little kirtan for Prabhupada. And the kirtan, there was only very tiny little finger symbols, and we, that was all no madanga, and just little, tiny little cartels, one pair. And we were allowed to go in and chant for Prabhupada. Tamal Krishna Maharaj approved us, that myself and this other devotee, devotee, American devotee, Nishringa Chaitanya, that we could go and chant for Prabhupada. So Nishinga Chaitanya Prabhu was leading and at one point he 
changed the mantra to Govinda Jaya Jaya, Gopala Jaya Jaya, and Prabhupada immediately opened his eyes and he said, just chant Hare Krishna. So that was like an inst final instruction I got from Prabhupada, you know, that he wanted to just hear Hare Krishna. At particularly at that particular time in his life where he's preparing to leave the body he just wanted to hear the Hare Krishna mantra. And Hare Sori Prabhu also describes sometimes in Vrindavan you know people would come and they'd say Radhe Radhe and Prabhupada would just say to them Hare Krishna. Prabhupada just wanted to hear Hare Krishna mantra. The Hare Krishna movement, right? We we're known as the Hare Krishna movement and we propagated the Hare Krishna mantra. And for Prabhupada that was enough. Although there's references to these other things in the books, you know, like I said, Prabhupada also said that this Hare Harai Nama Krishna, that this should go on, especially in Mayapur. And he said this is also the Maha Mantra. And the Krishna Krishna, Rama Raghava, like that, that's also there, that was in the Jarakanda forest, Lord Chaitanya chanted that. But Prabhupada's real focus was on the Hare Krishna mantra. He wanted to hear the Hare Krishna mantra. Everything is there in the Maha mantra, the Hare Krishna mantra. People would sometimes ask why we chant like this, that we're following Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya chanted the Hare Krishna mantra, mainly he's chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Prabhupada points out, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not discuss philosophy with many people. Few intimate associates, Swarup Damodar, Ramananda Rai, Prakashananda Saraswati, like that, uh, not Prakashananda, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, these people, these few intimate people, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke to them philosophy. But for the mass of people, it was Sankirtan. When all the devotees would come from Mayapur to Jagannath Puri and they would stay for four months during the Rathyatra time and everything, they would have Sankirtan. They would be doing Sankirtan. And Maharaj Prataparudra, he was amazed when he saw the devotees. He saw they were so effulgent. When they were doing the Kirtan, they were so effulgent. They were, and, and he'd never heard kirtan like what they did. It was so sweet, so melodious, wonderful kirtan. And he was, over, he was just amazed to see all these devotees, how effulgent they all were, chanting the holy name and dancing in total ecstasy. And they would, this was the, the devotees, the, they came to Jagaratpur every day, they do like this. This was their life, kirtan. So we want to also make kirtan something of our life, it's a, certainly. It's not something which you simply want to just do once a week. You know, sometimes you just go to the temple once a week and you have a little kirtan, you sit there. But kirtan should go on constantly. Morning, morning and evening. And we want to always be hearing the holy name and be in that ocean of transcendental bliss, hearing the holy name chanted by these devotees. If we're always hearing the holy name, then certainly we'll be remembering Krishna, we'll be in Krishna consciousness. This is very important for us. So very glad that this week is giving us all an opportunity to remember more the importance of chanting the holy name and taking shelter of the holy name. And we can only pray to the Lord and all of his devotees that our chanting can give us the fruit which we want. And the fruit which we want is Krishna praying. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give Krishna Prem to everyone. And he gave it and he was tasting it himself through Sankirtan. The way to give Krishna Prem to others is by doing Sankirtan and the way to experience Krishna Prem ourselves 
is by doing Sankirtan. So everything is there within the Sankirtan movement, within the chanting of the holy names. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Maharaj. On behalf of the, all the congregation of Singapore, we would like to have our heartfelt thanks to you for sparing your valuable time. So, Maharaj, as a practice, what we have been doing is every day after the speaker shares with us the knowledge, we sum up and I present a brief summary of what all was discussed during the class so that those who joined us later somehow can take the full benefit of the class. So, once again, on behalf of all the congregation, Maharaj, thank you so very much for sparing your valuable time. So, for those who joined a bit later, please uh, uh, stay for the summary. So, Maharaj started with how everyone chanted and how Mahaprabhu brought the mission of Sankirtan movement right from his birth. From his birth itself, Lord made everyone chant the holy name. And the holy name is nothing but the dharma of Kali Yuga. The Krishna Shakti can only, Krishna Shakti is the only one which helps us propagate the holy name. Lord himself came to inaugurate the activities of Shri, Shri Krishna Harinam Sankirtan. How the Lord went to Gaya and got initiated by Ishwara Puri. And how the earlier part of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life was involved in logic and debates. But once he got into his sannyas, we see how he was engaged in full-time preaching. So daily Sankirtan was a daily affair for Mahaprabhu in Shiva Thakur's house. And when Mahaprabhu was in Shiva Sangan's house, it was as good as Ras Leela every day happening in Volo. So every day Mahaprabhu used to have Krishna Katha in the day and Kirtan for three hours every evening. That would be the daily routine. And every day that is how we should be following, doing Krishna Katha in the daytime and every evening Kirtan. In fact, every evening three hours we should, before and after the class also, we should be doing Kirtan. Maharaj said also that Kali Kali Nama Rupe Krishna Avatar and it is very very important therefore for us to associate with the holy name. Then Maharaj elaborated on the travel to South India where chanting of the Lord Ram's name, there was a devotee who was chanting Lord Ram's name and how after coming into Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's contact, he started chanting Hare Krishna. So that shows the power of association of a devotee. That is why association of a devotee is the most important. Then Maharaj also told us the story of the Buddhist monk who tried to harm Mahaprabhu by sharing contaminated food stuff but in the end ended up that his disciples chanted the Hare Krishna Mahamantra for him. And thus the disciples of the Buddhist monk instead became the spiritual master by giving him the holy name. And we see the effect of the power of holy name. So before Krishna consciousness we were always in unfortunate condition and this Krishna consciousness is a key to transformation. Mercy of the holy name Maharaj will explain how they can change atheist as well by the example of the Buddhist monk. After that, Maharaj elaborated how Mahaprabhu travelled to Vrindavan via Banaras and there people like Tapan Mishra also got a chance to associate with Mahaprabhu. Attractive features of Mahaprabhu attracted many, but there were Mayavadis also who got repelled. Somehow by Krishna's mercy and Mahaprabhu's mercy and the mercy of the holy name, these Mayavadis also got transformed and how simple service can lead to give greater mercy. We have to chant holy name and develop the love of God. Right? Everybody chanted Hare Krishna and popular kirtan, regular popular kirtans in Banaras in front of the Bindu Madhav duty, which was a mo one of the most beautiful deities there. Hari Haraya Nama was a favorite of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The transformation of Mayavadis with the power of holy name, we saw how it happened. And then mercy of Mahaprabhu flows with the holy name. So much so that even the wild animals began to chant gently the Hare Krishna Mahamantra and they started to dance. One day, one, one fine day, there was a Brahman who chanted with Mahaprabhu and could see the symptoms of ecstasy. So rightly it is said, Golokira Premadana Harinama Sankirtana that this holy name is not from this material world from, but from Goloka. So this Brahman who was chanting with Mahaprabhu was none other than Madhavendra Puri's disciple. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma was another verse that Maharaj touched that joyful souls imply, imply the awakening of your spiritual life. 
So simply chant and dance. That is our movement. Prabhupada went to the West with only faith in the Holy Name. He did not have anything else to depend upon. And how his chanting, simply chanting, then dependence on the Holy Name attracted people in the Sankirtan movement and his faith in Holy Name, that is why, is the most important. Awakening of love in the hearts of conditioned souls is only possible through the chanting. Thereafter, Maharaj also touched briefly on how when Prabhupada came to Duhu, Maharaj, Maharaj got a chance to chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra and how Srila Prabhupada, when Narsim Maharaj, Narsim Prabhu was singing something else, he was prevented to sing Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Prabhupada just wanted to hear Hare Krishna and nothing else. So, mass, for mass of the people, Hare Krishna Mahamantra is the key, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's case we saw. When for four months, when devotees used to come to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all in all, Sankirtan was the key, and even King Pratap Rudra could see the effulgence in, in the devotees who were chanting. That is called nothing but the Harinam effulgence. Kirtan was really their life and soul. Constant mantra, constant chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra should be our key. We should always remember Krishna and that is how we can remain forever in Krishna consciousness and get the fruit of Krishna Prema, which is Harinam Sakirtana and that is everything. So we should all desire, as Maharaj rightly pointed out and guided us, we should all always plan and try to chant always and remain in Krishna consciousness. Thank you so much Maharaj for your mercy. We look forward to hearing you again. For all the rest devotees, we will have Gaurang Prabhu who will be talking on the glories of Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur tomorrow at the same time, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. We will be continuing the celebrations till 28th of this month. So please join us every day. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna.